With VMware NSX, VMs on different hypervisors will be able to communicate through the extend tunnel over an IP underlay network. But it's also possible to add Aruba AHU25 switches into this solution to provide bare metal and virtual machine connectivity on the same subnet. It basically provides layer 2 network connectivity between the virtual machines on the EXSI host and the bare metal servers connected to the hardware VTAP switch. So you can configure your solution through vCenter to configure the tunnels from the A325 to the remote hypervisors dynamically through a centralized location. And that will allow the bare metal to reach the virtual machines on the hypervisors on the same subnet. So basically this is MAC forwarding. This switch will learn about the remote MAC addresses and the next hops. AA8D has a next hop of 106 and AA8E has the next hop of 107. That's how this switch knows how to forward traffic from the bare metal to the virtual machine. And the same thing will happen back on the hypervisor. The hypervisor will learn that this bare metal MAC address 0F7C has an XOP of this A325 through the NSX controller. The A325 communicates with the NSX controller through the out of band network port via OVSDB protocol. Let's start by taking a look at the IP address on the bare metal server. It has the IP of 225.3 and has the MAC address of 0F7C. From a switch perspective, we see 0F7C on VLAN 4000 on port 117. This is the port and we're on the A325 switch. So let's test connectivity to the virtual machine 225.250, which is on the hypervisor. Right now, there's no connectivity because the tunnels are not up yet. You can see no MAC address learn of the remote VM and there's no connectivity. So let's go to VMware NSX. Let's go to the desired logical switch, 5000 in our case. Let's add hardware binding to gateway number two. We select port 117 and specify the desired VLAN. After some time, you can see there is connectivity to the virtual machine on the hypervisor. And we will see the remote MAC address as well, AAAE on VLAN 4000 on the remote hypervisor 107. So there is connectivity now through this tunnel. Next, let's do a vMotion. Let's move the VM from this hypervisor to the 106 hypervisor. Let's stop the pings first. Regenerate. This is the VM that we're interested in. Migrate. Change the hypervisor and finish. So it will start to do the motion from one hypervisor to the other. And it's completed. Check minimal packet loss, but you still have connectivity. And you can see the destination VTAP has changed for the AAAE MAC address. It's now on the 106 hypervisor. So basically, the VM has moved over. 